Well, I'm the chairman of Space Sciences Corporation, and we are a small research and development company specializing in radiation effects, uh, materials, uh, physics, uh, electrical and computer engineering, basically research, development, test, and engineering of special projects, um, lasers, optics, and uh, of course, a flying saucer. <laughs> Yeah, we uh, uh, had the opportunity to talk to your partner about uh, uh, the flying saucer, but uh, just a few more questions we wanted to ask you. Um, how did it come about that uh, you obtained uh, um, the rights from uh, Dr. Moller to, to continue developing this technology? Well, I came to New Mexico uh, about seven years ago and from Boston, and I designed my own sky car, uh, or flying car. And it turns out that I kept talking about it and wanting to get it built. And um, I, I came to New Mexico on invitation by the White Sands Missile Range to build an advanced laboratory that they could prove technology for semiconductor radiation testing, uh, albeit at a university at New Mexico Tech, a program called METOM. Subsequent to that, I uh, more or less um, once accepted the job, had the opportunity to uh, investigate this flying car. They said there was plenty of elbow room out there in New Mexico. And so when I came, I, I realized that was true. And I kept talking about this sky car and building this flying car. And somebody did a search and realized Dr. Paul Muller in Davis, California had already been working on this sky car. And I said, wait, I gotta talk to this guy. And so we invited him to New Mexico. And Dr. Paul Muller came to New Mexico and we spent a couple of days together. and. Um, we basically developed a bond and uh, grew into a friendship over the years uh, for the last seven years. And so we've been assisting in trying to uh, get some of Mahler's products into the mainstream uh, because they're so advanced and so different, they're not easily accepted. And uh, essentially, um, Dr. Mahler tinkers and moves on to the next version, to the next version because he's really most interested in the flying car, whereas now we're, for the spaceport, it's appropriate to introduce a uh, flying saucer. And it's uh, a very fun educational thing that we're trying to do. What was your first reaction when you saw his uh, flying saucer? Uh, it, it was kind of interesting. Um, one of the stories about Paul, a lot of people really don't know, is uh, when he was a kid, he had saw a hummingbird that had uh, you know, was downed, and um, he nursed it back to health. And so what you have is this hummingbird who, if you're a hummingbird at a hibiscus flower, and I've seen the same thing growing up as a kid, the hummingbirds, you know, doing their pollination, they, you know, inter inter interfacing with the hibiscus flower, and they would just be this still. And so, you know, I always thought to myself, geez, you know, I've had floating dreams and uh, dreams I would was flying, you know, without any, <laughs> just flying, and so, um, I'm sure we have a lot of those types of dreams as kid children and even as adults. And so I've, I've always believed that we should be able to do that. We can land people on Mars. Uh, we can land uh, rovers on Mars and men on the moon. And uh, this is more close to Earth than people uh, realize. I mean, it's, it's stuff we can do, but it's the will to want to pursue it. And so an auto volunteer is a technology which lends itself to... Um, being, being so very advanced, so not a lot of people are aware of what potential it might have, but for the people who understand it, it's, uh, it's a very important um, you know, piece of uh, technology. Now, um, um, after uh, uh, initial test flights begin, um, what, do you, what do you expect or what are, are you guys um, working towards uh, of the top speed of the vehicle? Top speed, we it's capable of, just based on the physics of it, is about 100 miles an hour. Cruise speed, 75 miles an hour. It's the speed we want to operate it at right now, no, no higher than 30 miles an hour. And that's just to get people to get used to it. I mean, it has automated flight systems, so it can basically be pointed in a direction to just drive automatically without hands off, which is the feature of also of the sky car, uh, a very important feature of this type of technology. And, um, but we'll try to keep the top speed to 30, 35 initially at, at 10 feet. Now, at the same time that you're gonna be developing the flying saucer, are you also gonna continue work on the sky car? Well, as Space Sciences Corporation, we 
We support Mueller in a number of different ways, and uh, you know we support his effort in the Sky Car, and to be able to provide uh, consultation concerning some of the avionics, the safety features. We're really big on safety as a company, and uh, you know an automated flying craft, and everybody's got one of them. Uh, means you, you definitely need to avoid people bumping into each other. So this thing is loaded with features which has collision avoidance, depth, uh, uh, deciphering in terms of how close are you to the ground, which is usually one of the most difficult things, the last 50 feet for any craft. So what we're looking at is um, to be able to uh, you know, identify you know, any weaknesses within the sky car but to use the saucer to, as a test bed for some of the avionics for the sky car itself. So the more flight time we get on the saucer, we have now a better opportunity to determine you know, any changes that need to be made in the sky car in a, very, in a much more cost effective way because it's way more expensive to bring the sky car to production than it is the M200. So in that sense, uh, that's, that's, that's the only sense in which we would support the, uh, the Skycar.